It says, who can find a virtuous woman? Proverbs 31 and 10, excuse me. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while as yet night and giveth me to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her, for her household, for all her households are clothed with scarlet. She maketh her, herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth Delivereth girdles unto the merchants. Stretch, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and, strength, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellent excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, shall she shall be praised. 31. Give her of her fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. 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 Thank God for the reading of the word. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, O oh God, we thank you, O oh God, for just allowing us to see another day. We thank you for another opportunity to receive from your word that we may continue to grow in faith in you and in your word and stand on it, oh God. Lord, we just love you right now. We ask you to remember all the mothers on today, oh God. Bless them in a mighty way, oh God. Bless this word as it comes forth. Just give us some understanding and some enlightenment, oh God, on today. We just love you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For today, I didn't really have a true topic uh, title for today, and we're just going to talk about mothers, is just what I put down in the area of a topic, just talking about mothers. But this, of uh, course, scripture here, when we look at uh, verse 10, it uh, starts off with a question. It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? It says, Who can find a virtuous woman? So, um, so it brings something to our minds as a question, something to think about. So, but with the question, there's an adjective there. It does say who can find a woman. It says who can find a virtuous woman. So first we must uh, start by looking at the word virtuous um, to get understanding of why this question is being asked or to get some depth or some details on there of this type of woman. And virtuous, um, from a definition standpoint, shortly states um, having or showing high moral standards. Amen. Having or showing high moral standards. So this is the type of woman that is being asked about in this question. Who can find a virtuous woman or who can find a woman that has high moral standards? Amen. So so the continuance of that this particular chapter begins to display or uh, address characteristics of a virtuous woman. But as I was studying and I'm looking up um, this definition for virtuous, uh, having a high, having or showing high moral standards, um, it had a list of adjectives. Um, adjectives are words that are descriptive. Amen. There's a quite extensive list here, so I'm going to read through that. 
um, adjectives that describe um, the word virtuous are is righteous, good, moral, morally correct, ethical, upright, upstanding, high-minded, right-minded, right-thinking, principle, exemplary, clean. I kind of laugh when I read that one. <laughs> Law-abiding, lawful, unreproachable, blameless, guiltless, unimpeccable, just, honest, honorable, unbridable, unbribable, excuse me, incorruptible, anti-corruption, scrupulous, reputable, decent, respectable, noble, lofty, elevated, worthy, trustworthy, I knew I was going to mess that up. Met meritorious. I believe I got that right. <laughs> when I was reading that, you know, I was struggling with that uh, last night, trying to get through that. Then he go continue. There's quite a few more here. Praiseworthy, commendable, admirable, laudable, pure, pure as the driven snow, whiter than white, sinless, saintly, saint-like, Godly, angelic, immaccable, impeccable, and then finally he says squeaky clean. Amen. So that's a quite variety of adjectives that describes the word uh, or goes along with the word virtuous. And in this particular setting for the scripture, uh, a virtuous woman or one that's having high moral standards, uh, if we just look at that list of adjectives, um, there's quite a high standard for calling one a virtuous woman. Wouldn't we say that? Amen. And we kind of used this uh, when I was reading through the, that as I was studying. I was like, and we use this uh, scripture uh, quite loosely as, a, as we look at that with, um, when it comes to women, not to be disrespectful, but um, looking at that list of adjectives that go along with that. I didn't count it, but I'm pretty sure but that was more, probably more than 25 words there. Amen. Not including just the definition of saying that clearly states high moral standards. Amen. So this woman who, so that's why if you think about that, uh, who can find one, a woman of this, um, it is probably, it is very rare that we can say we can find one that actually um, encapsulate, encapsulates all pieces of this particular scripture that is going to be described to you um, as we go forward. So who can find a virtuous woman? We are, will be able to find, of course, women that have several uh, characteristics of this, but one that embodies all of this is, I would say, would be very rare, very rare. And uh, so we're going to continue to um, walk through this scripture here a little bit. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? And then it describes that. It says, for her price is far above rubies. Amen. So basically, we can say this person is priceless, amen. Anything that is rare, uh, we would consider in our, in our society, I would consider uh, to be priceless, meaning yeah, how can you establish a value for something like that, amen. Uh, something that is rare, how can you really establish a value for that, amen, because there's nothing to um, that you can say that is equivalent to it, that you can monetize or set a value to it, so who can find a virtuous woman for her prices far above rubies? And then it goes on to continue to describe this. And let me read for here. Um, I'm going to jump around here, read what's, what is kind of describes here. When I was reading um, earlier, the description of this particular chapter in my study Bible, it says that uh, it describes this portion of the scripture. Um, each verse of each one of these verses kind of mimics the uh uh, where's it at? Uh, the I believe it said the Hebrew alphabet. That's where it says in each one of these, and it says that this kind of describes the woman from A to Z. Amen, amen. And it kind of looks at uh, a woman from A to Z, basically from top to bottom or from start to finish. Amen. The full embodiment of what a perfect or a virtuous woman should be, all the characteristics. And it um, describes it here. Just a quick breakdown. I'll read this, and then I'll go to what I have. And then we'll conclude. 
it says right here, it says in verse 10, it says she is rare. And then, of course, that's what we just read. And verse 11 describes her being trustworthy. Verse 12 describes her as constant in her love. Uh, 13, industrious. 14, thrifty. 15, a self-starter. 16, enterprising. 17, willing to do hard work. 18, willing to work long hours. Verse 19 describes her as willing to do monotonous work. 20, compassionate. 21, prepared for the future. 22, a good seamstress. 23, married to a leader. 24, an entrepreneur. Um, verse 25, it says, not swayed by circumstances. Amen. 26 says, wise and kind. Amen. And 27 says, duty conscious. Verse 28 describes her as blessed by her family. And the 29 says, not satisfied with the mediocre. And 30, a woman of God. And then finally, in verse 30, it says, praiseworthy. Amen. So each one of these verses has a characteristics that is being displayed here. And I'm only going to look at a few here. Uh, again, as I said, when we're looking at the scriptures, um, the scripture as a whole kind of looks at women um, as a whole, and then it kind of breaks down to uh, these kind of categories of, of a mother and a wife. So some of these scriptures are really talking, may describe um, a wifely duty, and then some of them describes a woman's, um, a mother's duty, a man as a whole. Uh, there's a couple of scriptures that I was just looking at. Uh, of course, it was when I was studying women as a whole, and uh, and then of course being a husband and or a, from a male perspective, um, there was three scriptures here that talks about um, a woman's beauty. Amen. Amen. Just briefly, um, Genesis chapter twelve in verse eleven, it says, "And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarah, his wife." Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Amen. 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 So we're talking about Abraham. So Abraham was describing his wife as someone that was fair to look upon. Amen. In terms of beauty, if we go a little bit further in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 7, it reads, And the man and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say she is my wife, lest said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca because she was fair to look upon. Amen. Amen. So, uh, amen. It's a good thing to have someone that is good to look upon. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, uh, actually, I have, I said three. Actually, it's not three here. I have, I think it's five. So, let's go to Genesis also. Chapter 29 and verse 17 quickly reads, and we may get a little laugh out of this one for those of us that knows the context of this scripture. It says, Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you know the context of that scripture, you, you know the uh, what was going on there. But again, uh, Rachel was beautiful. Amen. She was described as beautiful. Uh, 2 Samuel 11 and 2 it reads, and it came to pass in in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was beautiful to look upon. Amen. Amen. If we all know the context of that scripture, we know that because of this one beautiful woman, um, David got himself in trouble. But um, that, but that's not the topic for today. Amen. We're just looking at um women and their beauty. Amen. And one more scripture here. Um, Songs of Solomon, of course, for those of us that know the Bible and know about this particular book. Amen. Chapter four, just reading verses one through three. And verse one says, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead. Verse 2 says, Thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are eaten shore, which came up from the washing whereof everyone 
bear twin, and none of none is barren among them. Thy lips are like a thread of scarlet, and thy speech is comely. Thy temples are like a piece of a pomegranate within thy locks. Amen. That first verse says, Thou art fair, and thou art fair, describing this um, woman, and it goes into some more specific details of this particular woman that this book, this particular chapter is talking about. Amen. But that is talking about one's physical beauty, one the way one looks. Um, when I look upon someone, the way someone's appearance, to them, the way someone is attractive. Amen. To, um, so that is um, something that uh, we see from the scripture describing a woman's beauty, um, someone that's fair to look upon. I thank God for having someone that's fair to look upon. Amen. From a male's perspective in the scripture talking about that. But I want to go dig a little deeper here. And this is where I actually do have three verses for a scripture where it talks about um, one's inner beauty, a person's inner beauty, and specifically here talking about a woman again for the topic of today's lesson. And it goes back to um, Proverbs 31 and 30, which we just read. It says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fear of the Lord shall be praised. Amen. Talking about one's inner beauty. So when we look at one's inner beauty, it says there, a woman that fear of the Lord. Amen. That is an inner beauty is a woman that fear of the Lord and one that a woman or a person that has um, the Lord at the center of their heart. Amen. I believe the song says, Jesus is the center of my joy. Amen. When we have the Lord that is our focus, amen, that is one that has an inner beauty. Amen. We can kind of generalize that, but this particular scripture is talking about a woman. Amen. A woman that feared the Lord. Amen. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 in two verses, verses 9 through 10. And it says, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, that shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broad broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Amen. So there is talking about, again, another inner beauty or quality of a woman, not one that is looking uh of course, we were talking about um, beauty just before. Of course, it's talking about one's physical beauty, but this was making the contrast of one, one's apparel and jewelry and makeup and this and that and the other, that that is an outwardly appearance, but one that had, has a God at the center of their heart, amen, or the, is, that's a good work, amen. It uh, says, but which, but which becometh women professing godliness, a woman that professes godliness, amen, that one... Is a is a good work, Amen. That's an inner beauty, a characteristic characteristic that is uh, something that is good of a person or a woman in this particular case. And then moving to this last verse, First Peter three, verse three through four. <clears throat> First Peter chapter three, three through four says, "Whose adorning let it not be that our adorning of planting." the hair and wearing of gold or a putting on of apparel. But verse four right here says, but let it be the hidden hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. Amen. And when I was studying that scripture, when that pulled that out, it was talking about that quiet spirit. Amen. A woman that has, that has God in their heart, amen, has a quiet spirit, amen, not one that is loud and always arguing and bickering and this and that and the other. We know how the, the stereotypes of what we can say about women, but uh, uh, one that has God in their heart, amen, has a quiet spirit, amen. It says, but it let, of course, this also is to, referring to the comparing of the um, a, a person's apparel, but it's talking about one's inner beauty, amen. A woman that has a quiet spirit, amen. That is an inner characteristic, an inner beauty that is uh, greatly to be praised, amen. That you can't put a price on it as we we're talking about there in Proverbs there, amen. But I want to jump forward. Uh, actually, I have one more scripture, a couple of other things. But I want to jump back into Proverbs 31 and look at, I mean, yeah, one, two, 
there are five here scriptures I want to look at specifically briefly um, that that when as I was reading it kind of talks about the mother's duty within those characteristics um, in that totality of this particular scripture here and looking at verse 21 you have that lady listed yes. Proverbs 10 and verse 21 you want to read that 10 and 21 yes Yes, Proverbs 10 and 21. The lips of the righteous... No, 31. Where, where we're at, chapter 31, in verse 21. 31 and 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Amen. So that scripture, when I was looking at that, is a, um, a mother that's taking care of her household. That despite of what are the wherever the conditions may be, that she that uh, her family does not have to worry about having clothes on her back, or we can kind of expel that a little bit further, you know, making sure that her children are fed, amen, making sure that the household is has been prepared for for when calamity comes or when different life issues come their way. If someone gets sick or the money gets low or whatever it is. Our weather comes. We know how weather storms come and their um, disasters and things, calamities, or just snowstorms we're stuck in that um, we don't have to worry about being cold in the winter or having food to eat. Amen. That is the duty of a mother, um, a quality of a mother here that states that she is uh, not afraid of the snow for her, for her household. What I'm, I'm kind of taking that as just saying that anything that may come that may be a shift from the norm that we that the mother has the household prepared amen has the household prepared but it is the scripture it talks is it spells out for all her household are clothed with scarlet amen and i want to jump a little bit further to verse 23 you want to read that one <clears throat> yes her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land amen so this is um one it kind of deals with the um, the wifely portion of that, but um, it is talking, uh, as I take from it, uh, a man will be proud of his wife when uh, when he knows that the household is taken care of. Amen. When all duties of the house is taken care of, he has something. Basically, a man or a husband has something to brag about. Amen. It says her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the, of the land. Amen. So he can go out um, being proud of the household that he represents, that he knows that he's if he's doing the job that he's supposed to be doing, and the woman does what she is um, says take care of her duties, amen, and all things are well, that there's a reputation that comes with that. And when he sits with the elders of the land, amen, he does smile upon, amen, he has a good rapport, amen, as he goes out to the gates, amen. Looking at verse 25, there, I'll read that quickly. And it says, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Amen. And those first two, three words, it says strength are those two words. Mm -hmm. Strength and honor. Amen. Those are things that I think about when we're talking about um, a mother or a virtuous woman. Amen. One that has strength and honor. Amen. I, when I think about, as I was stating earlier, um, just represent, talking about my wife as well as my mother and, and my mother-in-law. I'm thinking about my grandparents. Amen. When um, Now that I'm at age 46, I'm old enough to have seen um, their lives uh, from a, um, a variety of time and different issues. Amen. I can definitely testify to the strength and the honor of those women. Amen. Seeing how they have taken care of their homes and uh, were loving wives to their husbands. Amen. And how they took care of their children and how they manage business, amen, and even the duties and goals and dreams of their own lives and things that they've taken care of, how they had strength and honor in that. And well, But most importantly, they even love the Lord, amen. Uh, when I think about it, all the women in my life in terms of grandparents and my, my wife and my mother, they all were lovers of God, and I thank God for that, amen. So it, allowed, it just shows how that um, having a godly uh, woman or mother um, in your family line, how that can um, continue to um, shadow over the family, amen. I thank God for that covering, amen, for having strength and 
and honor in the woman. And then we look, look at verse 26 here. <clears throat> and, and then I have one other verse, which we already read, but we'll look at that also. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, verse 26, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Amen. It talks about her speech. Amen. And I think the scripture we just read a moment ago talking about that quiet spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Talk about that quiet spirit. So one that is um, meek um, is a good word for that. So when she opened her mouth, um, words of wisdom come. So uh, you think about a good mother, she's speaking wisdom to her children. Amen. But not only that, she speaks wisdom to her husband. Amen. And that's what uh, has a um, allows for a peaceful household. Amen. Um, is guarding our speech. Amen. That goes uh, with all people, but in this for this particular lesson, for the woman or for the mother, amen, take care of the household. Is it in her tongue? It's the law of kindness. Amen. There's nothing like, even in, even in a dispute, amen, or, or disagreement in a conversation, um, having that law of kindness, amen. You can um, be in an argument or disagreement, but still being respectful in your conversation. Amen. That is um, showing wisdom. Amen. And that is something, a characteristic, characteristic that all people should have. Amen. In conversation, um, um, being kind, having that law of kindness, speaking wisdom. Amen. Um, having that quiet spirit, taking, being patient before we speak. Amen. Thinking before we speak. Amen. In uh, whatever we're dealing with. Amen. That is something that um, I wanted to pull out when it talks about the mother in the household. Or the woman, uh, she opened her mouth with wisdom. Amen. I think about many um, times, um, even as an adult, we, of course, we're always getting it as a children from your parents. They're always teaching, always teaching. But even as an uh, adult, from time to time, you talk to your parents as a mother or father, but talk about mothers of today, that you'd be on the phone, you're just having a casual conversation, and all of a sudden you get one of them nuggets. Amen. They're just trying to make sure uh, make sure they, they, they're they imparting something on 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 their children to make sure they, that they're lining up and make sure they're uh, holding on to the standard that their uh, st that the children are having um, are being having more of their the character of them are is being established that they're staying on line, amen. But thank God for that. We thank God for that, and we honor that on today on this Mother's Day. But I like that last verse um, that we've already read, verse thirty. It says, "Favor is deceitful." And beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. So that is most important of all, amen, as we was talking about, um, I was talking about the beauty a moment, uh, early and gave scripture on that, but we all know in reality that beauty comes and beauty can go, amen. That's why it says it is deceitful and it is vain, amen. Even uh, when we talk about the natural beauty and then how we talk about the apparel, that we use to make ourselves even more beautiful, to accent that. But that is all vain, amen. The, the clothes will come and go, amen. They'll come in style and go out of style. The makeup, will, you'll put it on and then it'll wash away, amen. As you sweat, your hair look good, and then the, before you know it, looks looks tacky, amen. We know as we age that um, our body's not as thick and firm and this and that as we were when we were younger and this and that and the other. Amen. We know that it's a, it says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feared the Lord, amen, someone that fears the Lord, fears the Lord at all times, amen, despite of whatever the issue is, amen, this person, this woman shall be praised, amen. I thank God for having a God-fearing woman in my household, as well as even as I was stating, my mother and my in-law and my uh Grandparents, as I know them, they were God-fearing women. Amen. I thank God for having that in the household. And I did put this in this, my notes, but I was thinking about even the scripture when Paul was talking about writing the, this letter to Timothy. And he was talking to uh, Timothy, talking about how his, I believe it was his mother and his grandmother, how they uh, imparted the word of God into him. Amen. That it was the women of God that taught him um, the scripture as from a youth on up. And then as Timothy was being called to the pastorate and was being uh, mentored by Paul, he, he reminded him of that, amen, in that particular scripture. And it was the women that was um, the benchmark that, that kept him, amen, fed him, that um, nurtured him and developed his character to be one that is uh, 
to be one that is uh, to be set up high as a minister of the gospel, amen, that he uh, was qualified, that's what I was looking for, to be in that position. It was his, his parents, his grandparents, amen, his mother that uh, developed him to be in this position. And one last scripture here <clears throat> that actually was the first scripture that I thought about when it was pertaining to this lesson, but I'm going to talk about this last here, at least from the scripture standpoint. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, uh, it reads, Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto his wife, as unto the weaker vessel, vessel and as being heirs, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Amen. And I always liked this scripture. I never stated it, but I'll state it here. That's why it came to my mind. First, when I was thinking about what I'm going to talk about for Mother's Day, um, is that phrase there, a weaker vessel, amen. It's talking about women. It was basically um, just stating that, it's just talking about, of course, the, comparing the man's body to the woman's body being weaker, in, in naturally speaking, amen. But um, when I was thinking about this in terms of a woman, that first part, before that, it says, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, I always thought about um, something that um, we think that is, uh, when we think of China, uh, talking about dishes, uh, fine China, uh, what do we do with that? What do we normally do with our fine China? Put it in a nice place. We uh, put it in a nice place. We put it up in a nice place. We always, we don't have it down here at a children's level. We always put it in a, in a China cabinet. We always put it up high. Amen. So anything that is precious, we, we what do we do? We raise it up high. Amen. So that was always a thought when I always thought about the scripture growing up that, um, um, when we, of course, this is talking about a woman. So when we think about our women, we should lift them up high. Amen. We should honor them. Amen. Um, because they are fine China. Amen. We talk about the beauty and we, uh, how we think about them. Amen. That we should give honor to unto them. When we give an honor to someone, we're doing what? We're lifting them up. Amen. So, uh, so saying weaker vessel is not, is not a bad thing. It's a good thing if it's done in its proper context. Yes. Yep. Amen. You know, giving someone, uh, when we see something that's uh, weak, we don't leave that around so it get knocked over and damaged. Amen. We we um, put it in a place where it can be what protected. Yes. Amen. So it can be honored and beautiful. Amen. Um, that is something I thought about as we looked at, um, first of all, when I was thinking about this particular scripture and something to say on today, that we ought to look at our mothers, our women in general, amen, and we need to protect them. We need to do a better job of protecting our women, in particular our wives for speaking to those our husbands or the men, amen, doing a better job of that, making sure we are protecting our households, amen. And next month we have um, Father's Day. And